Hi, Todd Zuckerman here at Drumeo, and they've asked me to come up with some, some myths about rock drumming, and I, I, I thought long and hard about it, and, and one thing is, is that you just, you don't need to beat the heck out of the drums to get an aggressive or good sound, and actually, you can play the drums too hard, where you, you are sucking any of the tone out of the drums. Uh, you know, drums and cymbals are only going to get so loud. So I'm interested in pulling a nice sound, a big sound out of the drums. And yes, I can play hard and maybe harder than I need to at, at some point, but I sometimes see guys just like unbelievable, like full throttle, like oh my God. Now I understand there's an element to showbiz for that, but if you do that in a recording studio, your, your cymbals are gonna sound like, you know, someone's ripping a newspaper. If you can pull a nice sound out of the drums, like check this out. Okay, there's not a ton of difference between that and. Now here's this. You hear how the sound of the drum wasn't as good as this? That's the case for all, the, all your toms, all your cymbals. So if you're hitting hats like this, you're just gonna be breaking hats and breaking sticks. And there's so much hi-hat going into the, the snare drum mic that the engineer out front is, is he's gotta roll off all these different uh, EQ things because this isn't even gonna be on. You don't need a hi-hat mic when you're playing the, the, the hats like that. So the cymbals are gonna be bigger and more oceanic sounding. If I play them crazy hard, But in a studio, I mean, those are still ringing as opposed to the, so the sound is over. You've, you've turned your 20 inch crash cymbals into splashes. So, uh, I had an experience a couple years ago recording in Toronto and I was brought in to replace another drummer on a session. So the part was right, but they just wanted it played better. And I went in and I played the drums really hard because it kind of sounded like this Foo Fighters meets Queen meets Quadrophenia era The Who. And when I went into the control room, no one's heads were, bo were bobbing. It was just, it was beige. And I thought, all the parts are right, how come this isn't happening? And I thought, you know what? It's just sounds and feels a little thin. There's something that's not right. And I told the engineer, bring my levels back a little bit. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna play the same piece of music with a lighter touch. And when I went into the control room, the sound was so much bigger. It was huge. You could hear the snares on the, on the, 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 the bottom of the snare and the toms and the cymbals were big waves, drinks of water, and everyone's heads were bobbing. And they said, what did you do? What did you do? What was the difference? Because you're playing exactly the same part, note for note. I said, I, I played with a lighter touch and the instrument sounds bigger. It sounded bigger. And even some of the guitar lines and, 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 the, and the vocals, the perspective of everything, it just worked. So that was, uh, that was a big win for me that day. I think another myth is that um, some people think that you need to have a big drum set to play rock, and, and you don't. Uh, this might appear big to you, but to me, it's actually pretty compact. It's, it's like a cockpit. There might be a lot of instruments there. I understand it's not a four-piece kit, but this doesn't seem huge to me. However, that being said, look at Ringo. Look at Charlie Watts. Look at Steve Jordan. Um, you know, all the great session players uh, and all the, the architects of rock, it's, you don't need the big, massive, you know, two gongs and, you know, chimes and the whole deal. That stuff might be fun, but you don't need it. You could have a, a phenomenal, uh, unbelievable career just playing one up, one down, single pedal on a bass drum, a crash and a ride. That's all you need. And I, I'll go so far as to say this, if you can't make it 
on a four-piece kit, getting more drums isn't going to help you. You have to be able to make anything happen on a, on a four-piece kit. So that's a huge myth in my estimation that you need a big kit. I don't need a big kit. I want a big kit. I, you know, I spent most of my year with the band Sticks, and that music was recorded with a drummer uh, originally that had a double bass drum set with a lot of toms. So that is idiosyncratically correct for my job. Those are the tools that I need to play that music. And for me, it's also fun. I like having all the toms and a, a gong drum. But is it needed? Absolutely not. The third myth is that you don't need crazy chops to be a great rock drummer. Chops were, 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 were never a thing that was a must-have. The things that are a must-have is to play the right part for the song, because you're playing rock music. Okay, we're talking about rock music, not like 15-minute like progressive opuses. You're playing rock music. You need to play the right part for the song, the right beat. You have to play with intent and passion and your vibe. And you can just play boom, whack. Boom, boom, whack, boom, whack, boom, boom, whack. If that's the right thing for the song, then there you go. You could have a gold record on your wall. You don't need to play God. You know, if, if you put, you know, drumnastics on top of the Beatles or the Stones, the music would suck. It would suck, ruin the music. It'd be like, let's put, you know, you're putting the wrong spice in, 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 in the cooking, you don't want, you know, yogurt with anchovies at the bottom. You want fruit, you know. Anchovies might be nice on, on, on you know, on pizza or a, a pasta dish. You have to have the right flavors and the right combinations, just like cooking, really. So you don't need to have crazy, insane chops. I, I, I get more out of hearing, you know, Steve Gadd play the on something, and I'm like, that's the coolest thing in the world. Or Steve Jordan, Mm. That's all the fill it needed. Dave Maddox, and that's the coolest thing in the world. Now, I love to play. I worked a long time on my facility, on my chops, on my speed, but it's like anything. Those are, are, are tools when called upon. I'm glad that I have those in my arsenal. I'm able to pull them out, um, but sort of the older I get, and it has nothing to do with getting older and crustier, it's I think getting older and smarter of my choices. I get more, some of my favorite recordings are like the most simple playing, or a fill, perfect thing there. I didn't need to play or whatever. It's every note, every note that you play is a choice, you know? So you have to connect with that, and there's gotta be a meaning and an, an intent, and it's something that's gotta go together with the song. That's all that matters, your time, your sound, your feel, your meter, your groove, your intent, that's, that's everything. All the licks and, and, and thrills and chills up here, that's icing on the cake if you wanna have some cake. So there you go. So those are my three rock drumming myths. What are yours? Post them in the comments below. I'd like to see what you say. Father always let me win.